So if you go down to a lower plane, are you? Is that like a uh, coming back as a, a maybe a dog or a cat? No, no, you can't come back in that consciousness. You uh, you come back. How you say, like almost like a drug addict again, a drug dealer, or somebody oh. that's murdering, and they, you have to work out your karma again, where you try to do better in the next life, and they give you a chance to work out your karma until you work everything out. Hello from Santa Monica, California. I'm here with Noah Castaneda and with John, what is your last name, John? Rock. John Rock? That's Seriously? John Peter Rock. John Peter Rock. Wow. I'm with The Rock. <laughs> okay, and we're here to talk about the lost years of Jesus. And uh, I'd like to give a little synopsis, but before we do that, can we open up in prayer? Yeah. Want me to go? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, uh, dear Father, Abba, I pray that I would open this whole just video. I pray that your spirit would uh, enlighten us, that you would speak through us, and that uh, you would guide this conversation and guide this video the way you desire to. I pray we just give glory to you and your name, uh, to your son's name, and ask this in Yeshua's name. So, John, are, are you a member or a representative of the uh, Church Universal Triumphant? Uh, not, so, not so much as uh, the minister or anything. I'm a follower of the Church Universal Triumphant on Summer Lighthouse. They give the teachings of the Ascended Masters and the Archangels and Elohim and, okay. you know, and spiritual beings and everything. But I mostly work independent on my, for myself from the teachings that they put out and everything. I see. Okay, so I would like to talk a little about the Church Universal Triumphant. Uh, it was, um, let me see, Elizabeth Clare Prophet founded the Church Universal and Triumphant as a religion of the ancient wisdom tradition akin to theosophy. Are you familiar with theosophy? Yeah, theosophy and, and, and Bailey and Blavatsky, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, that was the I Am activity, right? That was came after that. Oh, came after. Lavosky came in 1875 in the early 1900s. The I Am movement started in 1930 by St. Germain and the I Am movement at that time to bring the name of I Am that was given to Moses and Jesus back to everyone. Okay. To empower them. So Elizabeth Clare Prophet, a.k.a. Guru Ma, Guru right? Ma, yeah was born in April 8th, 1939, and passed away on October 15th, 2009. Is right. that correct? Correct. She was an American spiritual leader, author, orator, and writer. She began her life as a spiritual leader in 1963 when she married Mark L. Prophet. And that's his real name. He's, uh, he's uh, Irish, and his real name was Prophet. Everybody said, well, is he a prophet? Well, that was his name. That was his name. His that's family name. Okay, he founded uh, Summit House in 1958. After the passing of L. Mark L. Prophet on February 26, 1973, she then assumed control of Summit Lighthouse. Right. Okay. And in 1975, Elizabeth founded the Church Universal Triumphant, right. which became the umbrella organization for the movement. And under her spiritual leadership, she expanded the church worldwide. We got up to like a million followers all over the world at that time, and we had a beautiful property in Malibu, California, which oh. used to be the Gillette family owned the property, and they had some beautiful churches and houses on the property when we bought it up in uh, Calabasas. And uh, it was 220 acres, and we did our own organic farming and, and spread the teachings all over the world from that area, wow. that location. Wow. Okay, and... Um However, in the uh, late 18, 1980s, Elizabeth uh, Clara Prophet controversially called to her members to prepare for the possibility of nuclear war uh, at the end of the decade, in the 1980s. That was, there was the, a, the end of, that was 1989 that we got a call from the masters to uh, prepare to get shelters just in case there's an insurance policy that if, when the Soviet Union was collapsing, that they might try to do a first strike on America mm. against us. So they said, build shelters and all, and we never even used them. We went and I was there for two years helping them build them into the mountains and everything. It's funny that the government has underground shelters. The United States government has underground shelters, but we don't have no protection. Right. So the master built them, 
and have food that, you know, the grain and food there for the last year, 20, 30 years in case something happened. And uh, I had a good time. I had fun building these things and hanging out with enjoying everybody. And we were dancing country western music and dancing, having a great time. <laughs> was, was that in Montana? Yeah, Montana, yeah. Montana. Up in uh, Livingston, Montana and uh, Gardner, Montana, right by Yellowstone National Park. Right, right. So, uh, but uh, now, was that a prediction or was that just a precaution that it this was more could... like a precaution uh, as an insurance policy in case the Soviets decided to, because they had all their missiles pointed at us and there was a lot of tension going on at that time and they were losing their, their, their power. So the master just prepared yourself in case they want to do a first strike. It's always good to be prepared to us. You know. Okay, now what were your feelings about the possibility of nuclear war? Did you really feel that you were being warned truly that this was going to happen? And did you it, believe it would happen? No, I got to tell you, the truth is, I've always felt close with the Holy Spirit and the, and the Spirit. And the, you can't die. I wasn't afraid at all about nuclear weapons. And nuclear weapons, I mean, it had some people there with fear. Fear, they had fear in their consciousness, some of the people. Me, I was having a good time every day. I was out hanging out with my friend's donut shop, uh, uh, organic, organic donut shop. They were really into all the heavy sugar stuff. We went on into the sugar. And all these other coffee shops that we own up there. And I was just hanging out every day, having a good time. Because I don't have the fear about if God wants you to go, you go. Right. Like nuclear war or somebody runs you over or whatever. It, it's just be happy and joyful every day. Don't worry about, you know. I like that. That's where I was at in my consciousness. So, uh, the masters, can, maybe you can elaborate more on, you mentioned the masters. Are you talking about an earthly group of people or are you talking about something no, different? Something different. In other words, what the masters were teaching us, they were living on the earth plane themselves. Saint Germain, uh, Moses, Jesus, all on the earth plane, they said you have to master your condition, master your physical, emotional bodies into a more perfected body or perfected thinking mm -hmm. and be a joyful and harmonious at all times where uh, once you master all this spiritually, right food, right thought, right deed, right consciousness, then you can ascend like Jesus did into a higher spiritual world where they have, where their world lives at, or where their, and in my father's mansion, there's, I mean, my father's house, there are many mansions, many levels of right. frequencies that you go to in your consciousness. If you're a murderer, you go into a lower stage of energy field, the astral plane. If you're like a saint, you go to a higher spiritual plane and work out of that plane after you pass on. And sometimes you have to come back because of your karma, you didn't work everything out. So if you go down to a lower plane, are you? Is that like a uh, coming back as a uh, maybe a dog or a cat? No, no, you can't come back in that consciousness. You uh, you come back. Uh, how you say? Like almost like a drug addict again, a drug dealer, or somebody oh. that's murdering, and they, you have to work out your karma again, where you try to do better in the next life, and they give you a chance to work out your karma until you work everything out in, a, in a good way. I see. So, but the Church Universal and Triumphant, is that kind of a syncretic, you know, where, synchronetic where they bring in a lot of uh, different ideas? Yeah, but, but per perfecting ideas, perfect ideas. They try to strive for the perfect, uh, how you say, community of, of, of people. No sex, drugs, and rock and roll, uh, heavy stuff. Right. Everything is like organic food, organic juices. Uh, try to strive for the, the, the perfect community or perfect uh, relationship with each other. Right. So they take the best out of every, what, whatever thought is out there. Right, right, right. Thought. Buddha said, do good, be kind to people. You try to strive for that type of, you know, Jesus said, love thy neighbor. Now, your neighbor could be a Muslim or your neighbor could be a, 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 a What's the other one? The Buddhist, but you love them no matter what. You don't love. You don't have to follow their teachings, but you love and strive for perfection and the consciousness of, of each other. What do I have to give up to be a member of the church? For example, if I'm a Muslim, can I stay a Muslim and still be a member of the church, or are there 
is, is there some well, conflict? This, is there conflict there? Only by the teachings of the Islam. You know, Islam uh, teaches different things, but if you strive for brotherly, Islam talks about brotherly love and we're helping one another. Right. Strive for that perfect thing, brotherly love and, uh, you know. Right, I see. So I, I know that, um, talk to me more about higher self and the I am. What is, what is that really? Well, Moses, uh, Bernie Bush spoke to Moses 3,500 years ago and said, uh, the, the fire of the burning bush said, I am that I am. Uh, I am is my name for all times. This is like your God presence that Alpha and Omega given to us to uh, strive for that perfection of becoming like your I am presence. Because when you pass on, if you're very spiritual and very high in consciousness, that's where you go to your I am presence and become one with your I am presence, which is immortal. You don't have to come back on the earth plane anymore, and you work from the higher planes, like Jesus and the rest of them do. So the I am, you said your I am, uh -huh. right? Each one has an I am presence and a rainbow body around it, seven rays of the colors of the rainbow. Um, each one of those colors is a different race of, of humankind. Uh, the white uh -huh. race, the, uh, the blue and purple race, uh, people come from those those energy fields of the seven causal body of the I am presence. Wow. So um, the I am, when when uh, Moses spoke, spoke to the burning bush, the I am, he said I am, right? Yeah. Essentially, he introduced himself later when Moses asked for his name. Uh, was that exclusive to himself? What was he saying to, to Moses there? I mean, it seemed like he well, was claiming but, but, it for himself. At, at that time, the being that was speaking to him was trying to bring the name I am back to the races on the planet at that time to explain that like Jesus did 2,000 years ago, hmm. before Abraham was, I am, was the name I am that was given to Moses and was given thousands of years back before that, but they lost it. They lost the knowledge and the understanding of the I am. Jesus was, his mission, one of his mission was to bring the name of I am back to everybody. I am is the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the light of the world. I am immortality. When you no. said being, what do you mean by being? Your spiritual being. No, you said when the name was, the I am was revealed by a being? What yeah, being like a God that? being. Well, like like that a being? Uh, some people believe it was Archangel Michael speaking, and we believe it was like Alpha and Omega. Speaking. Who's, is that the father or the son? Alpha and Omega? They are uh, masculine and feminine for the mother God. I am Alpha and Omega, beginning and the ending of all times. Is that is that with the yin and the yang? Yeah, the yin and yang, the masculine That's and feminine, the positive and negative. The, the, omega, the omega would be, the alpha would be the yin and the yeah. omega would be the yang. The yang. Yeah, and the I am is the Alpha and Omega. The A is the uh, Alpha, and the Omega is the M, the mother. What, what, what was it that he said, because it was in Hebrew, it was Salifa Da, or was it, what was it, Hebrew? Alpha and Omega in Hebrew was... Yalva. Uh, oh, the Alif and the Tav. Alif and Tav. That, yeah. That's what he said. He said Alif and Tav. Yeah. Uh, Alpha and Omega is Greek. Well, okay, so we've discovered that the there's a syncretic, a synchronetic uh, aspect to, to the universal, I mean, the church, and universal, universal transcendent. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now, but it also has sacraments, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there are several sacraments, and I, I noted some of them here. For instance, I was interested in baptism. Uh, how do you baptize in the, in the, the church? The same like the Catholic Church does. In the they name give of you the Holy Ghost, uh, the, the, what you call that? The, uh, the wafer? The, the wafer, yeah. and it's supposed to be by, like the body of Christ. Okay, but baptism, that, that sounds more like communion, but baptism, what do you do? With baptism, baptism. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember what the baptism is like. Uh, it's supposed to be by the Holy Ghost through fasting and prayer. Is there is there a, like an immersing? Do you, do you immerse in water and come up out of water? Yeah, we still do that. Yeah, baptizing with water. Were, yeah. were you baptized in the church? Uh, Probably many times because of the karma. Your karma, you're going through your karma. You're baptized with the. <laughs> so you, you can be baptized more than once. Yeah, it's the Holy Spirit. It comes into you, uh, really, baptizing you. You know. Would, would you say it would be done like I, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Uh, we do that all outward appearance, but mostly it's the Spirit in you. 
the Holy Spirit in you. Oh, so you're saying like the Spirit comes upon you. Oh, yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. Baptized in the Spirit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, what is this? Uh, the office of the Vicar of Christ. What is that? Uh, That's an office of taking the position of the Christ consciousness that the Pope's supposed to have or supposed to represent. Oh. Of, uh, the Christ consciousness is the, Jesus. Last name wasn't Christ. It was no. Jesus the Christ. No. The light. Uh, the uh, the yo. What do you call that? The name. The logi. Is the, the logo. logo. The logo. And so, in so, other words, it's becoming like putting on the Christ consciousness in yourself by being good at all times. So, what does Christ mean to you? What, I mean, what do you, what do you think? The light, uh, the light from uh, God, the light from the universe in you. Hmm. You know, becoming pure light. I see. So, let me ask you about the relationship between God, Christ, and the soul. The soul? The soul. Oh, the soul. soul. Uh, the spirit is like the highest. The soul is you in the physical plane, uh, like the seat of the soul. Uh, the soul can be corrupted, the spirit cannot be corrupted. But is there a concept of Christ or God, Christ, and, and the soul? Is there something, is there a teaching there? Uh, I don't know, you just got to become more godlike. You okay. Know, uh, more like imitation of the Christ Jesus, being a beautiful soul and loving everyone. And you may have touched on this already, but what is it? What is the Great White Brotherhood? That means the uh, the white light in Jesus' aura and the white light in everybody's aura. When you charge yourself up with these decrees and the I am affirmations and mantras and prayers, you become more light shining through your body. I see. As the white light is shining through your body like the sun, the sunlight. So um, what can you tell us about the uh, Divine Mother and the Aquarian Age? Every 2,000 years, we go into a different constellation in the universe. We switch to a different constellation. If you know anything about astronomy. Something. And astrology. We just, we just left out of Pisces last 2,000 years. We were in Pisces. Pisces was Jesus' symbol and sign, the water, the fish. Everything last 2,000 years was by ship. We traveled all over the world, importing, exporting, fighting with ships. The Aquarius age we just went into is an air sign. Everything's gonna be wireless, air, airplanes, spaceships. Your body will become more angelic-like, etheric-like. In the next 2,000 years, you got to work on your body to become an immortal being, like an angel and a center master. I see. Wow. And um, what does it mean to become a communicant? Communicant. Live a good life. Live a good life? Yeah, try to live your best life. No smoking, drinking, try to stay, you know, even keel. So you're, you're a communicant if you exemplify a good life, and so you're you're demonstrating higher principles. To higher principles. We have a little book on what it means by that. It's a little rule book, and you have free will to choose to follow it or not. But right. to become a communicant, you have to follow those rules of dressing nice, don't dress sexually, uh, uh, don't dress weird, uh, you know, clean, right. keep yourself clean, and try to keep your consciousness clean at all times. Interesting. And then, uh, do you know anything about Madame Bla what is it, Blavatsky? Madame Blavatsky, yeah. yeah she Blavatsky. started the Theosophical Society when three masters appeared to her in India and said, we're gonna start bringing back the ancient wisdom of all the uh, religions when they were together at one time, mm. under one roof, where now we're all divided. The Hindus, the Buddhists, the Jewish, the Christian, the Catholic, all are divided against one another. We're gonna start bringing back the ancient mysteries of everybody under one roof together and bring this whole planet into a golden age of unity. I see. Instead of division. Well, how did the uh, divisions come about? Mankind, uh, the Tower of Babel. Tower of Babel. Where they were fighting one another and arguing with one another and killing one another. And, uh, and God touched them and said, uh, you know, caused them different uh, speeches and different uh, words uh, that they didn't understand each other anymore. Right. So we started dividing among ourselves. So that division, some people took certain kind of knowledge, others took different... To their own 
and, and the Eagles and say, this is the way it's going to be with us. And then the other group went over and said, this is the way it's going to be with us. Right. And they started dividing their groups and their tribes. So the, the idea is to unite everyone to bring that, right. that, that the, the right. pieces of lost knowledge right. and together. They, they try to bring it with the I am name. If they can bring that together with everybody speaking the I am, I am love, I am light, we are one, you know? Right. Instead of the, it's my way or the highway or whatever. Well, uh, Madame Blavatsky was born on August 12th, 1831, and she left this life on May 8th, 1891. A Russian author who co founded the, the Theosophical Society. Theosophical Society in 1875. She gained an international following as the leading the theatrician. I can't say that word. Theatrician of philosophy. Just tell me about it. <laughs> you're doing doing okay because you're doing better than me. Theatrician of the Theosophy of Theosophy. Theosophical. Theosophical. Indeed, uh, scholar J. F. Or Jeffrey Franklin characterized Theosophy as a hybrid religion for its syncretic. There's that word again. Combination of elements from various other sources. So that's similar to the uni uh, Church Universal Triumphant. Yeah, they want you to become more perfect in your consciousness and your deeds and doing good for people. Be kind and be good to people. I see. That's the whole uh, the whole crux of the thing. So now you wanted to talk a little bit about the lost years. The lost years of Jesus, yeah. The lost years of Jesus here. Uh, this picture of Elizabeth Clare Prophet right here. Probably can't see it. I don't know if you want to take it up to the camera, but anyway. That's okay. Uh, but they can check. They can check it. They, they can. can they it. can check it. Yeah. So what do you want to tell us about the the lost years? It really starts off in the Bible, where Jesus was 12 years old, and he was waxed in, in wisdom and knowledge at that time, and then you get him again. He comes back at 30 years old. He's traveled somewhere, so nobody knows where he's been at from 12 to 30. That was missing from the Bible. And what's happening was Mother Mary's older brother, his name was Joseph, and they called him Joseph of Amazia. He lived in a city next to there, Jesus and Mother, in a beautiful mansion there. He was a Jewish uh, merchant. He owned a lot of tin mines in England, and he would sell all the tin to the Romans to make their weapons and tin stuff and everything. So he took Jesus with him from the age of 12 to the age of 30 to go to uh, he had uh, certain merchants that he wanted to sell in the Middle East and, and in India, which had incense and beautiful silk, and so he wanted to trade with them. And he took Jesus, the young boy at the age of 12, with him to those places. He didn't know that there was really God's purpose. Well, what I'm trying to understand is the difference between the Nazareans, which is what we are, and and your understanding of, of uh, salvation and what have you. So uh, what I got here is uh, what do I got here? Um, it seems to me that the Lord is pretty exclusive when he says he's the I am. And you have taken it to a, a general concept which is universally applied. Universally applied. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so uh, when, what, how do you look at the New Testament? How does that, how do you look at the New Testament? We, we read the Bible every day. We believe in what they say, a lot of that in the Bible, the New Testament. You know, Jesus doing the miracles and Jesus saying, what I can do, you can do. Right, and that's true. And, but we take it literally, because what did he do? He raised the dead, healed the sick, he uh, walked on water. That's because he raised his vibration and his frequency to a higher frequency. Right. You know, he, he overcome gravity and the density of this plane by prayer and fasting. By prayer and fasting, you change your frequency in your body to a higher frequency where he can walk on water, which water is dense, it's like concrete walking across, you know, almost. And uh, he can put the... The, his body was so supercharged up with electricity, electrical currents through his cells in his body that he could put his hands forth and send that electrical currents through somebody else's body mm -hmm. and bring back the dead or charge up the electricity in their body, which it was really dense like a light bulb. They'd be like a 40 watt bulb. He'd be like a 2000 watt bulb of electricity and light. All right. Yeah. Uh, where, where do you get that from? 
Huh? Uh, like the, uh, That's from science and uh, from a universal knowledge that your body's electrical body. Your heart is electrical, your brain's electrical. When they want to restart your heart, they put the electrical thing on it to, to get the, the charge the electrical current through your heart to start. Right. Jesus knew those ideas. He studied the universal electricity around your body. Nicholas Tesla knew that, wanted to give us free electricity, but they didn't want him to do that because they wanted to make money off of it. <laughs> and he had free electric cars and free electric motors in those days back in the 1920s, but they didn't want him to have it. Right. Jesus knew all that knowledge from God and the higher powers. You see? The, but the thing is, when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, how does that fit into your understanding of the I am? By you saying the I am, that was the fire, which you want to become like the fire, the spirit. Yeah, that's true. By saying I am, you become like that I am. You become like that fire, the spirit. It, it's like your body, like I said, is electrical. You charging your electrical battery up in your body, your aura, your chakras, every time you're saying I am. I am love. I am light. I just charged myself up just now by saying that. And yeah. it has to do with the intensity and the purity of your thoughts and words. Anybody can go around and say, I am, I'm better than you. That's the <laughs> ego. It's got to come from the heart. It's got to come from the, a perfect place, you know? Yeah. I, I have a question. So, I, I know from Scripture, you hear I am. I know that's Yah, because you hear hi, I am who I am is Hayah as to Hayah. There's that Yah. When you say Yah, which means ever existent, ever present, and you call yourself I am in the context of a general, but even though we know that we're talking about the Messiah, don't you think that we're like kind of almost profaning his name a little bit because we're saying we're the I am too, we're the Yah? What I can do, you can do. Yeah. But, but we do remember. He said, Jesus said that. I didn't say that. He said that in the Bible. What I can do, you can do. Just the same. So we, we believe what he said. We can use the I am to become like him. Well, well we're meant to become like him. Like him. That's right. Thank no, you. No, that is exactly. true. No, I, I agree 100%. That's right. We, we, that we're, we're all here to become like him. Yeah. Uh, a contract. son of God. Right. A uh, light of God. But there's still a... Um, uh, when I'm talking about charging your body up in a pure way by using the word I am, name that was given to Moses, the fire, the electricity, this, this plant is run off electrical currents. Right. If we don't have this electricity coming from the sun, we're gone. Right. We have no life in this planet. Oh, absolutely. The sun uh, gives us electrical currents every day. We have solar panels, solar jar generators off the sun right. because it gives electricity to the planet. But I, I still see a, a, uh, an exclusivity in the fact that we receive all things from the sun. Yeah. And I'm talking about the son of God. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sun is God. Who put that sun there? Well, that's true. That's true. The, the, I didn't put it there. God put it there. He put it there. Because if we don't have that sun, we have no life. No, that's yeah. right. Right. If the sun dies out, we right. die out. Right. There's. So the light's there. That's the light of God, the sun. I think nature reflects the reality of the spiritual world. Yeah. God, nature is God, God, and the spiritual world, God. And yeah. so you have the sun, yes, and everything comes from the sun. Yeah. And that's that's you. why everybody, all the, all the different religions worship the sun. The Mayans, the Incas, the Egyptians, the, the, everybody worship the sun as that symbol because they brought life to you. It charged your body up with electrical currents when you sit in the sun and sun gaze, it charges your body, your cells in your body up. But that exclusivity is when the Lord said, he that believes in me shall never die. Yeah. It, it seems that you can't separate Yeshua. Me means what I did. I became the son of God and you got to do likewise. But we become- It's not exclusive, it's uh, universal. Well, it's exclusive to the extent that you have to have faith in him in order to become well, have a faith son. in the words he brought. The huh? words that he gave us, follow them. Be ye therefore perfect like your Father in heaven is perfect. Right. So become perfect like them, by like living a perfect life, like do good stuff, good do your things, good thoughts, good uh, kindness to everybody. Well, we also, we also, you know, we, we, we're not, we're not righteous by inherit. Like we're not born righteous, we're, we're not righteous people, we're, well, you want to strive for righteousness. 
So, you want to strive for being a better person. Right. So in the book of Isaiah, uh, I think Paul quotes it. He says, We're, uh, uh, all of our righteous works are filthy rags. Um, the point here is, is that our righteousness, that, or the righteousness that's given to us, is imputed, imputed onto us through Yeshua. Right? So we, we wear that righteousness. I have a problem with the priests when I go to the churches, Catholic churches, are saying that we're a bunch of sinners and, the, and the, uh, they're always programming you. You're no good. You're a sinner. No, I don't believe that. You're well, a better person. Well, John, let me ask you, what, why is there death in the world? What is the purpose of death in your life? Because of people's lifestyles. They eat junk food. They, uh, they have junk thoughts, they have junk words, all that affects your body. It's not what goes in your body, but your words that come out, you say, I hate that person, I don't like this thing, I don't want this stuff. Your words are very powerful. Okay, so. That's why it's good to say Gal's name, I am. I am love, I am light. I am having a beautiful day today. Who's come here to this planet and lived because they lived a, a righteous life other than Yeshua, Who's come here and, and done that? Mo Moses, uh, Buddha. Uh, but Moses died in the Bible. According to the Bible, he did die. Yeah, he, he died. He died at an old, uh, uh, ancient age. But uh, Messiah. Messiah. See, in my teachings, we believe in reincarnation. You're going right. to die, but you keep coming back until you perfect yourself as a spiritual being, a, 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 a beautiful soul, a beautiful spiritual like that. And they do that to keep your body in good health by trying to get food from the sun. Right. Vegetarian, well, vegan, uh, uh, organic juices, uh, you know. Uh, but you don't think that some of the things you're saying sound a little bit like um, almost like Egyptian, Egyptian god, like God's base? Almost sounds a little, a little bit what you're saying. Huh? You don't think some of the stuff you're saying is a little bit like God's based like like fair like kind of like Egyptian kind of God's based with the sun and all those different things. We come from the, the light, the sun. If we don't have the sun, we have no life on this planet. True, but I, I guess. Well, John, let me ask you that's about the sun of God. In our teachings, that is the sun of God. Let me let that me, sun, the sunlight, the energy. Let me ask you about Gnosticism. Are you aware of Gnosticism? You know, they don't I heard of the word, but I don't. Know. Okay. All right. I don't know if that's in part of your religious. Uh, what is it? What it means? Well, it's a whole religious system, like like what you're teaching. What you're oh, teaching. knowledge? Is that what it means? Knowledge of well, wisdom? No, yeah, gnostic, gnosis, gnosis, gnosis knowledge. is knowledge yeah. or, or secret oh, yeah, we knowledge. We believe in uh, getting the highest knowledge and the highest wisdom. All right. Wisdom to us means wise dominion. Right. You know, get wise and take dominion over your house and try to live a good life with your house and your job and everything. Don't go to go to a job with uh, selling drugs or alcohol or the, the lower vibration stuff. Right. Try to get a job that's going to help raise your frequency and your family's frequency up. All right. So James wants me to read this. Go ahead. That's uh, in Romans 3, You're gonna uh, read? 9 through 20. Okay, so let's read it. It's a little bit of reading, so just bear with me. All right. What then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously changed both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin, as it is written. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understand. There is none who seek after God. They all have turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. They are, there is one who does good, or there is none who do, does good, not, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and misery are in their ways, and the ways of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. We know, or now we know, that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that the, every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For, the, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So, John, do you think that uh, it, that we, as in our in our present condition, our human condition, which seems to be imperfect, I think you'd agree oh, most yeah, people yeah. are... Because of the diet we're on, the, the lifestyle we live, 
we're being programmed by the fallen angels on this planet, which is the power elite that they can control. They put poison in all the food. Monsanto has got the foods all poison we eat for years, and it affects your organs in your body. It destroys the organs because it's not natural to your body. They put all these chemicals in your food, Monsanto. The water supply, they put fluoride in it. Hitler used fluoride to dumb down his people. Fluoride is a neotoxin. Right. So it destroys your body and everything and make it become more robotic like which Jesus was trying to wake us up from all that stuff. But I think also what he was reading there was that the law is perfect and yet we, none of us seem to measure up to the law. We all fall, fall I mean, short. I'm just saying that the falling angels got our consciousness so low that we can't even think about better things than perfect things. So you got to strive on yourself through prayer and fasting. You try to help. Back in the 70s, I seen my friends, so I was in the late 60s, half of them was on drugs and doing heroin and drugs, and I said, I don't want to go that route. The other half were married, had three or four kids, and they were stressed out. I don't want to go that route. So I went to the Catholic Church one day, which I wasn't re really religious, when I looked at the statue of Jesus in the church, and I said, Jesus, brother, if you real, please help me. Well, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. And I got a message like, try to eat better food. There's a health food store down the street. Go see and research what they have and what they do to make you feel better, do right. better. Right. And that's what I did. I started going to the health food store. I had no more friends after that. Nobody wanted to go with me and talk about it and do it. But, but to achieve the, um, you know, you, you believe in reincarnation. That's what you right. said. But isn't that a form of, of suffering, uh, pain and suffering, really? Not really. You know, no. If you think it is, try to strive for your best thing. I'm drinking uh, carrot juice, and I'm drinking organic wheatgrass juice, and I'm drinking organic uh, uh, vegetable juice every morning to make me feel better. That's good. Right. Hey, what's happening? So I, I guess what I'm asking is, how do you achieve, based on your own efforts, eternal life where you're not, I mean, you have to admit, when you're born into this world or you're born, you're reincarnated, you're suffering. You're, yeah, there are good times, bad times, but it's a form of suffering. If you want to follow that. You don't think it's that? No, I think it's, it's testing you to become a stronger person. God tests you to see if you're going to do better. <laughs> So when does it become? If you want to suffer, it's up to you. Right. Well, when when does you got free will, brother? I'm sad. Well, I'm sad to see you suffering, but I don't. No, no. The point he is, he might be suffering. The point is, people inflict suffering on other people as well. It's not That's always their a karma. choice. They make bad karma. Oh, it's just their karma. <laughs> yeah, karma is good and bad. Karma is good. If you put that suffering, because you're getting suffering and you're having a hard time with drugs and all, and it makes you feel bad, then you go out and try to help, hurt everybody else. That's bad karma. Right. But if you're feeling great, try to make everybody else feel great, feel good. Well, I go get the right type of food, get the right type of juice, get the right type of energy, get the right type of positive prayers. I, I agree with what you're saying about the food and all that stuff, but I think we're really off topic when it comes to scripture because this really has neither. I mean, yes, it's true. Should we take care of ourselves? Absolutely, because it will prolong our lifespan and better our consciousness and our capability of being focused. Yes, I absolutely agree. But this really has not, really this is really near neither here nor there. We look like we're trying to give a scriptural basis. Well, I, I tell the people in my building, they all got health problems. They all in their 60s, 70s, 80s. And I said, what's the reason why we're here? You guys are not having a good life. You're having all kinds of these health problems. You're going to the doctors every day. I haven't seen doctors in years. They said, I said, what is the purpose of life? Just to come here and eat this junk food and die and have health problems in your older age? That's the life? Is this junk food? Yeah. <laughs> no, this is healthy. This is healthy. At any rate, uh, I, we, I agree with the, the principles you're talking about. All sound sound. Uh, but fundamentally, we believe in Yeshua, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that we really have to put our faith in him. Uh, yeah, otherwise, you gotta, you gotta do something because faith well, yes, without worth is, is dead. Is dead, absolutely. You can have more all the faith absolutely. you want in Jesus, absolutely. but if you go out smoking, drinking, and then no, say, no. I don't have to work. No, we try to live 
uh, in the we try to follow the way he lived. We, you can we have try to walk the way he Jesus, walked. Which I believe, but you got to do the work too. Be yeah. a positive person. Try to help people. Well, think good thoughts. Try to help as many uh, homeless people or whatever you know in a good yeah. way. Yeah. So if you say you love him and you don't obey his commandments, right? You're a liar. Yeah. Okay. But we stick pretty much to the New Testament. I know. And everything. Yeah. You know. And so, um, but it's interesting to see the differences. Yeah. And that's why we had you here. I already knew that. So that we could talk about some differences. You're not telling me nothing I didn't know. Yeah. So I know I, where you guys are at and I feel good with it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You guys are good trying your best and you're doing good. You're putting on a good show. This uh, these tapes you're doing and it's helping a lot of people. Well thank you John. I really you appreciate it. You gotta get that. to the, the highest level of your conscience that you possibly can and you guys are doing good. Thank you. That's why I, I come in here. If I didn't agree with a lot of you guys, because I know you're gonna be putting me through the test with the Bible and everything, who right. cares? I've been through that before. But you helping a lot of people, your group. Yeah, in one sense you can say we're trying to establish Yeshua consciousness. Yeah, yeah, I have no problem with that. So <laughs> I, I would never hung out with you if I didn't think I was going to get anywhere. Right. Well, I want to thank you for your you time. You guys got an open consciousness. Sometimes I don't know about this guy, but <laughs> he's, he's good. I, I, you got to love him. I love, anyway. I love Noah. I go, I go anywhere with Noah. Is there, he's in the ark. <laughs> Noah's ark. Well, this has been a presentation. Is that your born name? Of the Nazarene. Uh, ministry of Yeshua, and we want to thank you for uh, spending time with us, and we hope that you continue to do so. And uh, on that, uh, Noah's going to end in prayer, and then we're going to sign out. Go ahead, Noah. Uh, Father, uh, thank you so for this time, for this opportunity to speak with John, that uh, he uh, opened up time to talk with us, and it was really awesome. I pray that everyone who saw us would be edified by it, and that the Holy Spirit. Um, to speak to us so that the word would just open and just up to us and we have understanding of it. Any true seekers out there that uh, that you would bless them and that you would guide them and I listen to them and they ask us the issues. Oh man, okay, oh, thank man. you. So, beautiful. Well, I think it was a beautiful time. Thank it you. It beautiful. So from Santa Monica, California, bye-bye. <laughs>